Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure of DNA. You should then be able to calculate the frequency of nucleotides on DNA strands. And finally, you should be able to describe the structure of RNA. In the last video, we saw that both DNA and RNA are formed from nucleotides. And I'm showing you the general structure of a nucleotide here. We also saw that we can join nucleotides together to form polynucleotides. And remember that nucleotides join by forming phosphodiester bonds. We're going to start by looking at the structure of DNA. DNA consists of two polynucleotide strands. So we have the sugar phosphate backbone on the outside with the bases in the center. The two polynucleotide strands are held together by hydrogen bonds which form between the bases on opposite strands. Now one key idea you need to understand is that the bases on one strand are complementary to the bases on the other strand. Guanine on one strand always pairs with cytosine on the opposite strand, and adenine always pairs with thymine. And this complementary base pairing is central to how DNA functions. In the last video, we saw that both adenine and guanine are purines because they've got a double ring structure, whereas thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines because they have a single ring. So what this means is that a purine on one strand always pairs with a pyrimidine on the opposite strand. And this means that the distance between the sugar phosphate backbones is constant all down the DNA molecule. Now there are a couple of other points that you need to understand. Firstly, the two polynucleotide strands in DNA are anti-parallel. This means that they run in opposite directions. Looking at the left-hand strand, we can see that the top phosphate group is attached to carbon-5 of the deoxyribose sugar. And at the bottom, we've got the hydroxyl group attached to carbon-3. On the right hand side, we have the carbon 3 hydroxyl at the top, and at the bottom, we have the carbon 5 attached to the phosphate. Secondly, the different base pairs form a different number of hydrogen bonds. Guanine and cytosine form three hydrogen bonds, whereas adenine and thymine form two hydrogen bonds. Now, because of complementary base pairing, the proportions of guanine and cytosine are always the same as each other and the proportions of adenine and thymine are also the same as each other. This means that we can calculate the proportions of the different nucleotides. Here's a typical question. 20% of the nucleotides in a sample of DNA contain the base guanine. Calculate the proportions of the other nucleotides. Well, if we know that 20% of the nucleotides contain guanine, then 20% of the nucleotides must also contain cytosine. The remaining 60% of nucleotides must contain adenine and thymine. So this means that we've got 30% of nucleotides containing adenine and 30% containing thymine. Now the two polynucleotide strands in DNA twist around each other to form a double helix, and I'm showing you that here. So we can see the sugar phosphate backbones on the outside and the base pairs in the center. Coming up, we look at the structure of RNA. Okay, now just like DNA, RNA is also a polynucleotide, but RNA is different from DNA in a number of key ways. We saw in the last video that RNA contains the pentose sugar ribose, rather than deoxyribose, which is found in DNA. Secondly, RNA does not contain the base thymine. Instead of thymine, RNA contains the base uracil. Now there are several other differences between RNA and DNA. Firstly, DNA is found in chromosomes in the nucleus whereas RNA is found in the cytoplasm. RNA plays a key role in protein synthesis, and we're going to look at that in more detail in later videos. Secondly, DNA is an extremely long molecule, often containing many millions of nucleotides. In contrast, RNA molecules are much shorter. Many RNA molecules only contain a few hundred nucleotides. And lastly, DNA is a double-stranded molecule, consisting of two polynucleotide strands twisted into a double helix whereas RNA molecules consist of only one polynucleotide strand. In the next video, we look at how DNA is replicated. Mm -hmm.